Hey, my name is Matt Riley, and this is the ultimate Shopify dropshipping tutorial to 100K a week. And just to prove that this works, I'm going to refresh my Shopify dashboard for today. I'm at $13,404. And then if we go back to when I first just launched the store, started a completely new store from scratch, and then I was able to find winner a winning product very quickly, and I'm at $10,000 days here, $15,000 days, scaled up to $19,000 in one day. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to hit the $20,000 day mark because PayPal had limited my account, uh, but I scaled down for a couple weeks and then I was hovering over the $1,000 day mark, $2,000 day mark, and just got PayPal back up on my store and trying to scale up again to these $10,000 days very recently. And then as we can see here in September, uh, let's go to the first day. So only $60 uh, in sales. Next day, 140 Next day after that, uh, about 1400 and so forth. And then I was able to scale up here. Here's the $4,000 days, $10,000 uh, that day. And then September 18th, uh, up until September 24th, as you can see here, the $101,000 in one week. And then uh, if we look at the analytics, I can actually show you those. And then we can see, um, even tried uh, even tried Zipify one click, one click upsell uh, during that week and just had a, a couple sales there uh, from there. But uh, as you can see here, here's the $101,315 in one week. And now let's get on with the training. So just a quick tip before I get started, make sure to follow along and take notes. I'm gonna leave an, a link in the description for this PowerPoint slide and make sure you click file, make a copy of the entire presentation. That way you have your own file and you can take notes on it and you can follow along. Now everyone is on a different skill level. So there are some complete beginners out there who know absolutely nothing about dropshipping and there are some advanced business owners out there who know a lot about dropshipping and know pretty much everything there is to know and just want to know and experience what other dropshippers who are scaling to $10,000 days, $100,000 a week, and what they're doing. So the first half of this video will be for complete beginners and you probably will already know it if you're advanced. So I recommend that you just skip the slides. Um, now, the second half of this video will be a little bit more complicated because I will be going into some Facebook ad strategies and for the average beginner, they probably won't know what I'm talking about. So if you are at this stage, make sure you bookmark this video and then come back to it later. So step one is we're going to choose a product category. Now, the product category that I recommend is an evergreen niche. And what does that mean? Well, what that means is a lot of products in the past have sold well and they are going to continue selling well in the future. And here are some examples. So clothing has always sold since pretty much almost the beginning of time and it will continue to sell for years and years in the future. And the same can be said about jewelry. Now pets, a lot of people have pets. We've owned pets for years and years in the past. And I mean, the Egyptians had cats, so we're going to continue to have to take care of our pets and buy stuff for them. And these are just some examples, home, kitchen, fitness, baby, health, electronics, toys and entertainment. Pretty much you can go out of this list. I know these are just a few, but if you see a product category that you like and it has tons and tons of different products that have sold well in the past, you know it's gonna do well in the future. That means you as a business owner, you wanna take on that role. That way you're not taking much risk at all. Now, if you don't know what niche you want to go into, uh, and that's okay. A lot of people do that, and even I have some trouble deciding what niche to go with at some times, uh, then I would just go with a general store. Now, what is a general store? A general store is, is basically like, here's an example, Next Deal Shop. And so this is actually a dropshipping store that a lot of you probably already know, but they sell multiple different types of items. They sell lighting. They sell waterproof phone cases, they sell shirts, uh, they sell clothing, they sell gadgets like this uh, lamp, night lamp, uh, all different types of stuff. And so you can easily do that yourself. There are tons and tons of general stores out there. And there, a lot of them are drop shipping stores as well. So here's another one. It's called Inspire Uplift. And they're another 
very, very successful general store. So there's plenty of room for general stores to succeed because there's always going to be products that people want to buy until the end of time. And so all you have to do is make your website look trustworthy and make yourself look like a nice, clean brand. And that's how you're going to stand out from your competition. Now, if you are using a, a 2018 style general strategy, then it probably won't work as well. However, I have seen it work even now in 2020. And if you want some examples on a niche store, so Fashion Nova, they're a clothing store. They sell pretty much all women's, women's clothing. They do men's as well. And so you can get into that niche because you know it's just going to sell well in the future. This is Caraway, and so Caraway sells a lot of kitchen items. And if you want to go this route, uh, I would take a look at their website and mi mimic them. Uh, Petco is a pet store, and they sell all pet products. And so I would take a look at them as well if you want some ideas. Now, you can do a one product store. That's what 1PS means. Uh, but the strategy that I'm going to go over with you today and this entire video, it does work best with a evergreen niche or a general store. You can do a one product store, but in my experience, it is a lot more expensive in both time and money uh, to get this up and running. And it's not always a guarantee. You're not able to pretty much easily switch products. Uh, like you would with a broad niche store, an evergreen niche store, or a general store. Uh, they both have their pros and cons, uh, but this does require a completely different strategy. Now, the reason why I really like evergreen niche or general stores and why this has worked for me for three years in a row and has, is continuing to work with for me in 2020 and it will work in the future 100% is because the ability to sell multiple products allows you to quit losing money. And so I think that's the biggest issue with a lot of one product store owners. They start a one product store and they lose a bunch of money very quickly. And then they start another one product store and they also lose money. And it just takes up a very long time to set up um, everything, the ads, the website, and uh, going all in on one product and continuing to spend money on the product and trying to force it down. Uh, but if you have the ability to sell multiple products in one store, you can actually quit losing money and then you can cut your losses very early. You can even cut them on the same day. Okay, So on average, 95% of products will fail for you. And don't let that statistic scare you though. I actually think this is a good thing. It just means that you're testing products, you're testing enough products. And so the 5% of the, the products that do become winners, they actually cover your losses very quickly. And so on average, I'm actually only spending around $2,000 on 95% of the failing products. But as you can see, you can make up that $2,000 in profit in literally just one day and from your 5% from your of the winners and much, much more as you saw from the 100K week, as you can see from today's numbers, yesterday's numbers. And so step two, what you want to do is you want to brand your online store. If you don't know how to do that, if you don't know how to create a website, I know a lot of you are already on Shopify, but just really, really quick, if you are not, uh, just go to Shopify.com, enter your email. It's completely free to try out. Uh, once you start getting sales, and obviously, and you're making money, yes, they will charge you. I mean, you're, there's no way you can get a, a website hosting for customers to pay for you, pay you for free. Uh, but you know you can go through the steps to actually create the website uh, for a free trial. Just enter your email and go through the steps after that. It's pretty easy. The reason why I like to do Shopify and why a lot of the e-commerce owners like to do Shopify as opposed to any other uh, website is because we can actually go from absolutely having no prior knowledge about this. And so if you don't know anything about Shopify or owning websites or selling products online, Shopify is the easiest and the cheapest way to do this. And it integrates well with all of the dropshipping apps and uh, dropshipping suppliers as well. And so you can literally today own a website where customers can give you their money literally today and buy products from you, even if you don't touch the products or see them. So if you don't know how to do this, I do have a video tutorial on my channel, uh, but make sure to first subscribe. That way you don't get lost and then you have access to all my videos and you can refer back to them. Uh, but on the top right hand corner, 
uh, just click on it and then you'll be directed to a playlist and you'll be able to have instructions on how to set up your first Shopify store. Now, step three, after you set up your store, you're going to come up with three product ideas and you're going to do that today. And so these product ideas are ideas that you want to sell and you can literally get ideas from anywhere and everywhere. Now, you can use Amazon and I actually really, really like Amazon. It's one of my favorite methods and I think the reason why it's one of my favorite methods is because they're a billion dollar company and you know they make billions and a lot of people say you know don't compete with Amazon but you can't there's no sense in competing with Amazon and we're not trying to do that uh, what we're trying to do is take a slice of the pie and so I mean even if you scaled to a million dollars in sales that's like 0.001%, maybe even less percent of their business. And so what you're just trying to do is get a slice of the pie and see what products work well. I mean, you can even just look at the front page because a lot of the front page shows uh, what people are buying and what people want today. And so you're going to get ideas from here and you can get these product ideas and sell something very similar as well. And then even just the platforms that I showed you or the websites that I showed you earlier. Uh, take a look at some top brand competitors. I get a lot of product ideas from here, there. So, you know, if you're in the clothing niche, you know, you could sell a lot of stuff that's on here. I know this mermaid bikini, you could probably even sell as well uh, during the summertime and then during the winter time, you know, you could sell some of these fuzzy coats and jackets or even long boots. And then you're gonna get a lot of really cool kitchen ideas from here as well. Just search around for the internet and you'll get plenty of ideas. There's an endless amount. Uh, you can even get ideas from just walking around. Uh, I go to TJ Maxx sometimes or even walking around Target. Uh, some people say that you shouldn't be trying to sell products that are sold at Target, but there are actually a lot of people who don't go to Target because you know they're, they stay at home. Uh, they just don't walk around and shop around uh, stores. And so you actually want to get that audience, that audience who don't shop around in stores and don't actually go to physical stores, and they're actually mostly online. Uh, TV commercials, magazines, even stuff you bought. So I've actually sold a lot of items very similar to what I've bought. And just look around your room, really anything. There's so many different products in the room that you're in right now, or even family members. Um, there are literally endless options. Uh, now, a lot of people ask, how do we decide which products to sell? Because there are millions and millions of products out there, right? How do we narrow it down? Well, this is my updated winning product requirements. Okay, so the first requirement that I am looking for is I want to know that people are already buying that product or they're buying something very, very similar. Um, now, the more people, the merrier and the better room you're going to have to find your buyers. And obviously, if it's a really really small targeted audience it's going to be a little bit more costly to acquire a customer uh, for example something like in the goth niche I know it works really really well uh, but it is a smaller niche than the pet niche uh, but they both still work um, the second requirement is there isn't much competition now this is going to be really tough to know and gauge if you not if you're not in the dropshipping game However, if you are following a lot of advertisements, uh, you've been in the dropshipping game, I'm sure you know which products are saturated or not. What you can do is you can actually go to Google and you can type in the product name and then you can type in plus uh, myshopify.com and then you'll actually see a lot of Shopify sellers. And so all of these sellers are actually selling this specific product. And so if you see tons and tons of pages of worth of Shopify stores all selling the same product, then you know that there's almost there's a lot of competition. There's too much competition, too much competition, and the cost to acquire a customer will be very, very expensive. Okay, so uh, the third requirement for a winning product is the customers will be happy with the quality. Uh, now this. Probably, um, if you were practicing anything unethical two or three years ago, then you were able to get away with it. Uh, but even if you wanted to do that this now, I personally would feel bad if my customers got a uh, crappy quality product. Uh, but 
what happens when they receive something of bad quality, then they're going to report it to Facebook and you're not going to be able to scale your ads. Uh, during scale, you're just going to lose all the money and all the time and the effort that you put in when you could have put more time and effort into a good quality product. Um, and then you're actually going to get a lot of chargebacks as well. So you're just going to lose the money that you make. Um, and then the last requirement is it has to be reasonable to sell for a price at three times or more of the amount that you pay. I know a lot of you already know about high margins, uh, but I still see this mistake over and over again. Um, now, a really good example of this is let's you can get a necklace for about three dollars, and you can mark up the cost for twenty-five bucks, and that is that's really high margins. That's great profit. That's great room for you to actually make money after you spend man, after you spend money on advertising. But a bad example would be a T-shirt and T-shirts. Uh, yes, you can get a lot of sales with with t-shirts, uh, but it's actually pretty expensive. They're, they cost around eight bucks, and then you can only really sell them for $19.99. I mean, $24.99, you could technically sell a t-shirt for that price, but that gets a little bit high, and then a lot of people know the price of a t-shirt, and they're not going to want to spend that extra five bucks. Um, so it's really not enough breathing room and enough room for you to actually put money into your bank account after all the costs it takes to run a business online. A uh, better example would be a sweater because a sweater uh, you could probably get for a couple dollars extra, maybe 12, 13 bucks, but you can actually sell sweaters for $49.99. I've even seen sweaters sell for $59.99 and I've personally bought $60 sweaters myself, um, so that is totally fine. Now a quick disclaimer, uh, this does sound like a lot of work and what I'm going to say next is a lot of work. Of course it is. Now, if we're scaling to $100,000 a week with 14% profit from home without a boss and on our own schedule, you know, I can work whenever I want. I pretty much just work when I wake up or maybe if I don't, I can sit on my phone for a couple hours in bed if I wake up and then I want to work later. Maybe sometimes I want to work at night. Sometimes I want to work during the day. Sometimes I don't want to work for the day and I need a break. Um, then I can just leave my work for the next day, um, although it's not it's not recommended while you're scaling, uh, but we can do that, obviously. And if we want to make a lot of money very quickly, fast, uh, and, and comfortable, you know, it's going to be a lot of work. And so I did find that my laziness and my inability to do the action steps while studying this video, and, I, and the reason why I say that is because a lot of what I did in the past was I used to watch a lot of YouTube videos, but you know I didn't really study the information and I was watching too many videos, but not retaining it and not doing every single action step in the video. Um, and so this really slowed down my income. But when I started to actually uh, narrow down the videos that I watched and then I would pause the video when I completely missed something or I would rewind and just replay anything uh, that I know I need to drill into my mind and then I would watch the video, pause it, do the action steps, you know, and so that's what I recommend. Watch this video, pause it, go do the action steps, come back, rewatch it as many times as you need until everything in this video is applied over to you because that's the only way I'm going to be able to transfer my skills and the way, the re, the way that I'm going to be able to transfer how I'm making a lot of money over to you and so you can make money as well. Now, if you do need more help with products, product selection, uh, getting product ideas, I do have multiple videos already with training on how to select products to sell. And so again, you're gonna click on the top right to watch another playlist of my winning products. Uh, there's a tons of free information, tons of free training for you. Uh, now, before you watch, do keep in mind that you do not want to just copy products blindly. Um, if we do that, and what I've found it every time I, copy a product blindly um, and I don't really do much research, um, it actually ends up losing me money because it loses me money in ads and we end up hurting our skills and our income. We're not going to be able to just take the skills and learn how to make money our own. Uh, and so you want to be, you want to make money forever, right? You want to make money pretty much every day for the rest of your life, a lot of it. And so the, only, the best way to do that is to have the skills uh, necessary. What you want to do instead is copy my brain and copy the way I think about products, the way I think about running a business. Uh, that way I can transfer my skills over to you and you can make money whenever you want. Uh, now step five of today's strategy is to get an ad to go viral. Now why go viral? So 
The reason why we want to go viral is because we're getting millions of views on our advertisement in a quick time frame. And having millions of views equals tons of new customers. And that's exactly how we're able to scale so fast. That's how we can make a lot of money because there's so many people worldwide, because there's so many millions of people viewing our ad. And then we only need a few thousand of those million, which is a very, very, very small percentage to buy. And that's how we make money. And that's how I'm able to scale up to those $10,000 days very, very quickly. Uh, so how do we get an ad? Uh, now there's two ways, obviously the free way, if you wanna do that, option A, you can order the product. So I would recommend ordering the product and filming it yourself if you want to go that route. And then option B is you can actually just find clips from the internet. Uh, just be careful of copyrighted content and Take those clips of your product and then go ahead and when you finally have all the clips you want, maybe you want to do a mix of clips from the internet and a mix of clips from what you ordered and filmed, then video edit yourselves. Now, if we don't know how to video edit, uh, there are paid options and we can hire someone else to do these for us. Now, before I get into the outsourcing part, I do have another disclaimer. If we outsource videos, pretend that you're the boss, okay? And whoever you outsource videos to is your employee. Now, if you tell your employee what to do and they don't know how to do it, how you want it, it's never going to end up how you like it, right? It's, they're always gonna mess it up because it's not meeting your standards. So you never wanna be a blind boss. And it, you really, you wanna take your expectations and you want to deliver them, you want to give them expectations before starting the project. That way they know exactly what you want. And so I see a lot of people, they'll outsource videos and then they'll put it up on Facebook ads blindly, but then they'll blame the company or they'll blame whoever they outsource it to uh, because it doesn't really work. Uh, but what you want to do is instead make sure that you are the marketing director director and so you want to imagine your video before they even create it so you imagine it and that way when they do create it you know if it has met up your expectations or not and if it doesn't then they need to obviously redo it as long as you had told them beforehand okay so here are the paid options uh, the first option is uh, it's pretty cheap and they deliver videos fast. It's called viral e commands. And, and so, what you can actually do is you can send them a request and they actually do package deals. Um, I like to get the 10 video ads deal and it's actually fairly cheap compared to a lot of other options because you get 10 different video ads for 10 different products. Um, but if that's too expensive for you, you can just try them out at $40 for one video ad um, and then they can create. Uh, ads for you, they can compile clips, and they'll find clips from the internet of your product. Now, uh, one thing to note is, like I was saying earlier, uh, for example, uh, let's say you wanted to sell this LED strip light, and so a lot of the ads, if you've never seen it, here's an LED strip light, and a lot of the ads, you know, they just kind of look like this, these LED strip lights are so cool, and then they'll just kind of show a room like that, and that's pretty much it. Right, it's, it's not, here's some instructions maybe, and it just shows up the product. Now, if I had submit, ordered from Viral Ecom Ads uh, for an LED strip light, and that's pretty much it, uh, they would probably come back to me with a very, very similar ad to this. Now, what's better to do instead is to do some research and uh, about your audience, do some marketing research, and really study the product and study your audience to know exactly uh, what they want, and Here's where I actually just took some notes. This is where uh, I would I first ordered the product and I, I made a purchase and then the video submission form right here in the notes, I had a product description and specific notes that I typed out everything and this is exactly what we wanna do to master marketing and get a feel of our customer. And then if we look at the example here, I actually have it right here and so uh, what this one actually did differently, and it, I know they sent me a bunch of different videos, this is only just one of them. Did you know sitting in poor lighting for long periods of time causes negative mood impact? And so none of the LED strip light um, sellers were actually using this angle. And so this is where I would come in and uh, really just inflict pain and cause pain on the customer ethically and then sell them the product 
create a great mood lamp and I really got into the emotional side and the feeling side instead of just saying that this product is so cool. And so when we tap into the emotional side of the product and into our audience, we're actually going to get more sales. And this is uh, how we're able to do a little bit better than our competitors as well. And so, you know, I had a bunch of features that I wanted specifically uh, because I knew that these customers were looking for these features, uh, yet the competitors weren't uh, advertising these features. Okay. Now, another option that you could do, and this does get a little bit more expensive um, and actually time costly, especially if we're going to do it per product, uh, but it's the best way to have our own custom videos. Uh, just go to fiverr.com or you can just go on Instagram and there are a bunch of models that you can DM and they can film your product video for you. Some of them will actually edit the videos for you too. Um, or you could do a mix. You can uh, get IG models to film and then you can go to Fiverr for video editing or you could just video edit yourself. Step six, now that you have your video ad, we're gonna launch with Facebook ads, okay? So we're going to advertise our first three products this week because I know it's probably gonna take some time to get your store up and running and really decide and narrow down. Uh, but once you get the hang of things, you wanna aim for at least one per day, one product per day, or you will fall behind, okay? So the best of the best dropshippers, they test thousands and thousands of products, okay? So here's the strategy overview. Because we will test a ton of products, we wanna be smart about allocating our budget, okay? So I've seen this problem uh, a lot in the past. If you don't have the same budget as me, or if you don't have high budgets, you do not wanna throw $100 per day on one specific product, for your first three products and then you quit after that. Everybody does this, a lot of people do this. Um, so if you don't wanna do this, make sure that you lower your budgets instead. That way you can aim for testing products. Now you can spend $100 per day like me on each product, but just note that you wanna keep doing it and you're gonna to have to uh, foresee that you're gonna do this for every single product and just look at your cash, current cash on hand and your budget. Now here is my new product launch method. It's called the winner shortcut method. And this is an updated version of Lucky 7 Launch, if you're familiar with that. And what I'm doing now is I'm doing one ABO ad set budgeting campaign. So this is not a CBO. And I do this per product and per day. So I'm launching one campaign per day at least. Sometimes I'll do two, three, four, five, even more campaigns, multiple pro campaigns and products per day. But you want to do at least one per day because if you don't, then you're not doing this method correctly. Each campaign is going to have six ad sets, and each ad set is going to be at $20 per day. Now this equates to $120 per day, so if you don't have this kind of budget, make sure you do $5 a day if you're doing low budgets. And you're going to do three different audiences for three of the ad sets, and then you're gonna take those ad sets and you're gonna dupe them and you're gonna target worldwide. You're gonna launch at midnight, and you're gonna do automatic placements. I've found that automatic placements is working a lot better than just the feeds or only a couple of the placements. I see a lot of the audience network actually being pretty profitable now. And you're going to do five plus million audience sizes. And the reason why you wanna do these huge audience sizes is because I found that less audience sizes uh, are usually not that profitable and they don't scale very well uh, because Facebook, it's hard for them to find your buyers, okay? Um, now, if you do find audiences that you like and that are related to your product, you can stack them if they're pretty small and just target all of them in one ad set. Uh, now, uh, you can use 50 million plus. I've seen a lot of 50 million plus, even 100 million plus audience sizes work well, so don't be afraid to go super, super big. Five million is just the minimum. Now, after you launch your ads, there are four scenarios that could happen next. The first scenario is you get very little or no sales. And so this is where you're just gonna cut the entire campaign and all of your ad sets. Now you might get an ad set that might be profitable, but because all of the other ad sets are not very profitable, you're just gonna have a hard time scaling because of the low audience win rate. Now these are usually products that are under a 0.8 return on ad spend overall. Uh, it will change depending on your product margins, but uh, if you're seeing very low return on ad spend, then I would recommend to just cut the campaign, focus on the next product. Now, scenario number two is you do get sales, but you're under break even, okay? This means you're not making money, 
but you're getting sales. Now at this scenario, you're going to want to cut the campaign and focus on the next products as well. This is what I do as well. Even if I see a 1.1 return on ad spend, maybe even a 1.3, I usually cut it. I usually cut it. Um, now, you can, optional, you can instead try to optimize the funnel. You know, you can test more ads, you can test more audiences if you want, or you can even create a one product store around it. I know a lot of people like to do this. Um, I personally don't. And the reason why is because I like to find a product that is profitable and I like to do these optimize I like to optimize the funnel on 1.3 ROAS or higher products um, that way I'm not actually losing money during the process of trying to optimize the funnel and so if you're tr trying to optimize the funnel it is going to get very expensive to do it if you're not making money now here's another quick disclaimer if you haven't had any success in the past you're going to need to look at your metrics such as the cost uh, per thousand impressions, that's the CPM. Your click-through rate, the CTR, that's how many people, the percentage of people that click on your ad. Uh, the CPC, the cost per click, uh, I actually like to do the cost per view content instead. And then the cost per add to cart during testing. Now, if you're seeing CPMs that are above $50, that means the audience size or the just the audience that you're targeting is just too expensive. Um, now, if you're getting CPMs of $50 and up and you're profitable, then continue targeting them. And you can actually ignore all of these if you're profitable. But if you're not profitable and you're getting CPMs like really high, then you're gonna wanna target other audiences uh, because this is just an audience issue. Now, if you are an, under a 1% click-through rate, that means less than 1% of people are actually clicking on your ad and you're going to wanna do unique clicks, then you're going to want to try a different thumbnail, a different ad copy, or a different headline. Uh, but, you know, obviously I like to just move on to a different product anyway. Uh, but uh, if you are getting good click-through rates, maybe you're getting good CPMs, but the cost per click is too high, uh, then what happens is people, it's a good audience and people uh, like to see the ad, but maybe you need to try a different ad because the ad is not compelling enough to make them want to impulse purchase on the spot. Now there are uh, cost per add to content views or add to carts and if you have uh, if you have good metrics up here but maybe you're getting a $20 or higher it's getting really expensive for people to add to cart then you're going to want to update your product page on your website maybe see what people are saying in your Facebook ad comments maybe see what E uh, customers are emailing you about, uh, add some more features, or uh, maybe you need to increase your website speed time. Uh, some of your images, there's too many images, or some of your images are very messy, they don't look clean, they don't look brandable, they don't look quality. Maybe your description needs to be cleaned up. Uh, these are all things that you want to update your product page with. Now remember, these metrics are average and they may be different based on your product margin. So if you're selling a more expensive product, then you're going to probably want to increase these numbers. ROAS is still king every year though, return on ad spend. Uh, now because I'm advanced and I'm pretty confident in my website, I'm pretty confident in my ads, I know which ads I want to launch. I don't really need to test as many ads anymore um, like I had to in the past. I only look at return on ad spend during testing. Now, I do, however, I do, however, however, because I'm spending, you know, $5,000 a day or more on ads, I make decisions based on the other lower funnel metrics during scale. So I actually look at these later on. But the reason why I don't do these or I don't look at these during the testing phase, and I know this is a long paragraph, but I just needed to compile my thoughts into uh, one slide. And I'm just going to read this off. But the biggest reason why I don't look at lower end metric funnel uh, ignore that typo, lower end metrics, um, the lower end funnel metrics is because I'm not willing to try and optimize the funnel on a poor product, okay? As this gets expensive, like I explained earlier, I'd rather try to optimize the funnel on an already profitable product. That way, when I am playing around with the funnel and the ads and testing more audiences, I'm not losing money, I'm still making money and I can turn decent profit into higher profits. And so you can turn losers into winners, uh, but they might just be a little bit above break even when you try to do that. But I found it's much, much better to just turn profitable products into higher profitable products.
Okay. And so obviously, like I mentioned earlier, if you're doing a one product store, you're kind of forced to do this, especially if you get uh, very little to no sales during the launch and you're forced to look at your lower end metrics during the launch phase, just so you can optimize your funnel. Okay, so scenario number three is if you are a tiny, if you are a tiny bit profitable, right? You're counting pennies. Maybe you're only making a couple dollars per day. Maybe you're making like twenty dollars per day, and maybe some days you're like losing money. Uh, then what you want to do is you want to move on to my six-figure speed scaling method. However, you want to do this at a lower risk, and you want to test less audiences. You want to increase your budget slowly. Okay, and this is usually if you're under a two point five x return on ad spend. Now, uh, for example, let's say uh, I launch a product and I get a good ROAS. Maybe I'm a, maybe at a 2x ROAS. Uh, but the thing is, when I go to scale 2x ROAS products, then the return on ad spend is going to go down and I'm not going to be making much profit. So I don't want to scale super aggressively. I only maybe want to test two new audiences. Maybe I want to increase my budgets by 20% instead of doubling it. And then now I want to make decisions from the data every three days since it's showing volatility, then I need to make sure it stabilizes over a longer period of time. Now, when you get into scenario four and you're super profitable and you find those winning products that are gonna be able to let you scale to $10,000 days or higher, then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to move on to my six-figure speed scaling method, which I'm going to share in a second, but you're gonna test a lot more audiences quickly. And so uh, you're gonna increase your budgets higher and you're gonna wanna do this faster. Usually you're above a 2x, 2.5x return on ad spend, but ideally you're at a 3x ROAS. And for example, you're going to test 10 new audiences uh, instead of maybe three, test a lot of different audiences now because you have the wiggle room to do that. Uh, you can double your budgets to, uh, to scale up instead of only doing like 20%. And then you can make decisions from data every day instead of having to wait every three days. Now, uh, this is uh, the steps to the six-figure speed scaling method. Um, what you wanna do first is you want to edit your profitable ad sets to increase budget. So I'm not duplicating the ad set. Uh, I don't really want to cause overlap, although there is a strategy that allows you to do that. In the very beginning, if I'm going from the launch to the start of the scale, that I, that I don't wanna do that, and I wanna edit the budgets, and I wanna increase them. Remember to do around 20% if it's a low return on ad spend, uh, but if you're getting like a 3X ROAS or higher, then you can increase the budgets even further and just go with a doubling the budget. And then you wanna do that every single day if you're getting return on good return on ad spend. If it's showing volatility, remember to do it every three days or maybe even seven days uh, step two is duplicate the profitable ad sets. Uh, change the audience only. You're going to hit the suggested and then you're going to launch. Okay, You want to keep everything the same, automatic placements the same, everything. And then you're going to repeat steps one and two as many times as you can and as fast as you can to scale fast. Uh, scaling is actually very, very easy. It's probably one of the easiest parts. Uh, now, there are multiple different scaling strategies, but we want to simplify it here at this stage right after testing. Uh, that way uh, we can scale as many products as we can. And then on step four, we want to manage as usual. It's pretty easy, right? If you're not profitable, just shut it off. Um, what I used to do is I look, used to look at 80 and 150% and I still like to do that. Uh, but just to keep things simple, uh, go with just if you're losing money, shut it off. If you're making money, uh, keep it going. Okay, um, now, if I do have a different method for scaling to up to $5,000 per day in ad spend, and it's called Hawkeye Scaling. And if you want me to create a video about it, it's going to take a long time. Uh, so that's why I need to create another video for it. Uh, but if you want that, go ahead and smash the like button right now. And if you have any questions about this video, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. And that's pretty much it. Uh, make sure to watch the videos that you see on your screen right now so you can learn more about how to make a ton of money with dropshipping.